everyone, welcome to Season 5 of Cowabunga Corner. In this season, we are going to go through more interviews, we have a lot more reviews, and definitely some old video footage like normal. So let's get started with the first episode where I'm going to review the first half of Nickelodeon's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2012 CGI series, Season 1. This has 12 episodes of fantastic stuff starring... Greg Sipes, Rob Paulson, uh, Sean Astin, Jason Biggs, Mae Whitman, Hoon Lee, and Kevin Michael Richardson. We have so many good, very funny moments in these episodes. Starting right away, we have Rise of the Turtles. And this is episodes one and two. They cover so much of getting the turtles up to the surface for the first time. They learn a pizza or pizza. Uh, they had their first fight, they find April, they get to see her father be kidnapped, and they go against the Krang, which is basically the Utrams with a new name. And now they're evil. But we did have an evil Utram in the Four Kids series. So it does happen, but these are the Krang, and uh, they add an extra A into Krang. And... Yeah, <laughs> that's the beginning of it. Uh, they go on, at first it's kind of that scary, oh no, they're going to overuse the mutagen in every episode. Because right away we get Snakeweed in the second episode. And then the third episode we get Spider Bite and Turtle Temper, uh, who's mutated because he caught video of the Krang and the turtles fighting. And then he's trying to blackmail them and ends up at a Krang base and the mutagen gets on him and he turns part spider. And... Then the fourth episode, we're going, who's going to be mutated now? But instead, we're brought into the other part of the storyline. Because we already know the Turtles are going to be fighting Shredder. Shredder's such a huge part of Ninja Turtle history. It's going to come up. So where is it going to come in? The fourth episode. Where we meet Chris Bradford and him and Zever are brought in to take down Hamato Yoshi and his ninja clan. At the time, they don't realize right away that they're going up against turtles. And they hopefully still don't know that Splinter's a rat, because that has not been revealed yet. But, um, so, we, we got this, uh, this new twist of henchmen for the Shredder. Personally, I like them. I really do like Chris. He caught my attention right away. He's a celebrity. He's out in the open. He's well known. He goes to all the tournaments. He's somebody that people admire and look up to. Uh, Zever is more like the standard Bebop and Rocksteady or the Purple Dragon gangs, who is the punk, who's a uh, street thief, he can get into anything, he's got his knives, he's been in jail. He's the complete opposite of Chris. And these two men are being teamed up to take the foot soldiers and go find the turtles. It really brings you into a new aspect of them finding out that the turtles are turtles. And uh, the turtles realizing that they're in danger. And we go from there. Complete turnaround. Leaving the foot. Leaving the crane. And we meet Baxter Stockman. And Don's made this gadget. His teapot. That Baxter gets his hands on. And boom. He turns into this big robot thing. And the turtles have to fix their mistake. And get the teapot away from Baxter Stockman. Uh, you learn in that episode that Baxter Stockman works at the... Worked. He was fired from the TCRI building. So you go, okay, we got TCRI mentioned. We have Baxter Stockman. We have the Krang. We have the Foot. So now most of the lead villains that you know from the series, from any of the series, is here. Any villain that really, really, really has mattered in all of the series is here. The Shredder, Krang, and now, of course, Baxter. There's still, of course, henchmen and other mutants that we'd like to see brought in that we don't know if it's going to be in the series or not. Like, how cool would it be to see characters like the Mighty Mutimals or Ninjara or Bebop and Rocksteady? Who knows? It could happen. But we got to sit back and relax because there's still so much other stuff for them to feed us and they will do things at their own pace if they plan to do it at all. So now from Baxter Stockman... We jump into Donatello making Metalhead. He makes Metalhead because he's tired of his weapon being broken during fights. 
And so he makes something that he don't think will be that easy to break. He's wrong. Metal Hug gets broken. A Krang takes it over. And he has to come save his brothers using his bow staff. <laughs> so we got quite a few good episodes right there. That's just the first six episodes. They introduced so much stuff to get the story moving. Of course, in all series, the first five episodes is nothing but the introduction episodes. Those are the episodes that set the basic ground, the basic world that the Ninja Turtles are going to be living in. So once you get past that, the introductions are not as important as getting the storyline going. They're going to now be working on getting things on the move. We got the characters down. We know who's who. It's time to get into the action. So they jump into introducing that there's more to April O'Neil than we originally knew because she has some kind of mind thing to where she can realize things that most people can't. And this is introduced in the monkey brain episode where there is a scientist who's got his hands on the ooze. He mutated one of the other scientists. After the mutation, he's trying to get this mind reading thing down. He wants to be able to read minds to be the most powerful guy out there. And uh, April is able to see through that the mutant monkey is the other scientist with her gift that Splinter has now realized she has. And Splinter brings her into training to be a female ninja. So now we have April starting to develop into something more than just the girl who happened to have her dad kidnapped. And we're going, wait, why has April got this gift? What is this gift? Okay, we'll, we'll see where it goes. Now after that, it's one of my favorite episodes. Uh, it's Never Say Zever. And in this episode, Zever's put in charge of finding the turtles and taking them down. So now Chris has to work with Zever. And it does not go over too well, like always. But we get introduced to a new friend for the Ninja Turtles, Murakami. He runs this ramen type place. And uh, the turtles get to try his pizza gyoza. And there, they get new food, they, they help save his life. Zever fails, falls. I love the way that Zever and Chris really relay on if they're friends or not. They don't care if one or the other is hurt at this point. All they care is that they get their mission done and make the other look bad. Sometimes, you know, you see this in the villains because Baxter Stockman and Hun had that relation in the Four Kids series. They didn't care about each other. All they cared about was making themselves look good. So when Zever had the chance to save Chris, the Turtles could have dropped Chris because Zever wasn't going to do it. Zever's like, I don't care about him. He's not my friend. So it was a very interesting character growth on Zever, and it's actually the point where I actually started liking Zever more. The first, you know, time I saw him, I was like, okay, I, I don't know about this character. But it grew on me, especially in that episode. Now, after that, we get thrown into the biggest run of the series so far, where it's one thing right after another. They put so much into the episode that you don't expect the ending. The turtles first have to fight this pigeon thing that ends up being a friend. It leads them to April's dad, who warns them that the Krang have a bomb that's going to spread mutagen all over the city. The turtles go to defuse the bomb. Chris and Zever show up to try and stop them, not knowing what they're doing, just wanting to take the turtles down. And then on top of all that, when the turtles clear the, the floor, going, hey, we're just that good, Shredder shows up. And you get to watch Shredder pound their shells into the rooftop of the Wolf Hotel. It is an amazing fight scene. It is just breathtaking. It's, you can do stop scenes and match it right up to their first fight with the Shredder in the Mirage comic. I love that fight. I love how they pulled out that episode. They were able to make this episode that just seemed like a very fast-paced running episode flow good enough to where you're not saying how did they get there or there everything was answered it wasn't oh they just magically appeared there you learn how each character learns where this is going to need to be and that is what i love about that episode that they were able to make it flow that well and they're able to keep the jokes in there there's some really good scenes like when don is first trying to defuse the bomb and leonardo's getting in his face it's a fun episode it's really well written. 
and I'm impressed. <laughs> I'm very impressed with where Nickelodeon is going. After the gauntlet, the turtles now know the threat out there against them. But so does Splinter. And Splinter is not taking it easy. They could have just went on with the next episode, not phasing at all that they fought the Shredder, or just, you know, the turtles now going out to search for Shredder like the other series usually do. But no, Splinter's now in a panic. He is affected big time. His sons is in danger. The Shredder's out to get them, and the Shredder could kill them. Splinter's already lost his wife and a daughter. He don't want to lose the turtles. So he's panicking, and his panic sets fear into the turtles. This episode is all about overcoming that fear, getting out there and saving the sewer system, because that's how Shredder's planning to flush them out next. Everything works out nicely in this episode. Uh, the only thing I have slight issues with is April going up and trying to deliver pizza to the foot just seemed kind of silly. But uh, the turtles could have snuck in that top window and heard what Shredder had to say instead of April going up there. But it shows that April's doing something for the team. And poor Mikey had to watch that pizza get thrown away. Wasting a pizza. Now that we got the turtles back on track of not being afraid anymore. And we've got April showing her skills growing. And we got the foot. There's times to introduce foot to Baxter. Baxter often ends up working with the foot. The Mirage comics were the only area where you didn't really see that take place. Uh, the original cartoon series, right away Baxter started working for the foot. For kids series, he was already working for the foot when we saw him. And now in the IDW comics, he's working for Krang. Not really the foot, but he's still working with one of the main villains. So it's time to team Baxter up with whoever he's going to be teamed up with. And in this series, it's the Foot Clan. He makes his mousers. One of the most famous products that Baxter's ever made. And also has appeared whenever Baxter has. So we have his mousers running around going after the turtles. But the turtles are on a silly mission to try and get April's cell phone back from the Purple Dragons, which leads everyone into a conflict, and Baxter is caught by the Foot Clan. It is an interesting episode. I actually was slightly disappointed with it, though. Uh, you had the turtles split up in teams, as Mike and Don had to prove that their team is just as worthy as the Leo and Raft team. And instead of doing anything to help, Michelangelo just spent time trying to name their missions, operations. He's just being the goofball he is. He's not taking it serious. He's not putting any suggestions saying, well, if we're going to do this, what if we also did this? There, there was no time where Mikey's brain clicked in and said, let's do this, this, and this. And if anything, that disappointed me because Mikey should have been made part of the team. But all this episode did was prove that Raph and Leo need Don. There was no proof at all that they needed Mikey. Because Mikey didn't really do much. Yeah, he fought. He, you know, took main action when jumping in and fighting at the end there. But really, when it mattered most, Mikey did not come through. And that, that disappointed me. I, I think the writers could have done something a little more than have Mike just trying to name the plans. And the last episode that I am covering out of season one is It Came From the Depth. In this episode, we are introduced to Leatherhead. It is a full sewer episode. The turtles are down in the sewers. The Krang is after Leatherhead. The turtles find him, get to see him beat up the Krang, and Michelangelo realizes... This guy's on our side. Let's help him. I love that. I really, really did love that. I, I think that made a great sense of how one should act when a fight scene is going on and you know one's bad and the other one you don't know anything about. This person is fighting the people who are trying to destroy Earth. That makes the alligator good. Right? 
<laughs> that's how I would look at it. That's why in the 2007 movie, I was disappointed when the turtles attacked the Bigfoot monster. They know the Foot Clan was evil, but they don't know anything about Bigfoot. He's just big and scary, and the turtles attack Bigfoot and try to help the Foot. Why? So when Mikey's like, hey, let's help him, I was actually proud of Mikey. That's my favorite Mikey episode so far, because Mikey stepped up, he stood up to his brothers, and he did the right thing. He helped Leatherhead have a friend, he, he showed that there's trust, and that they're all on the same side. Fantastic episode all around. Leatherhead was outstanding in this. I like that he still got his wild side, like they showed in the 4Kids series. This is the fun stuff, you know, that we had the Mirage comics that the 4Kids took from. So it all roots back to its original state of mind of the old comic book series, but of course with the new twist of Nickelodeon show. Yay! <laughs> I'm excited. I think that they're doing such a wonderful job. It's exciting. It's thrilling. It's overwhelming just how far they can go. At the same time, there's some disappointments. Uh, I'm not going to lie. And never say ever, there is a scene that I despise. I think that it basically takes any theories of Mikey and tosses them out the window. And most areas of Ninja Turtles, you see that Mikey's smarter than he lets on. And he really can be smart. He reads the comics, he watches cartoons, he gets his own way of thinking, which is different than his brother's. And through that extra way of thinking, along with some ADHD, he's a hyper guy. You can check out my Michelangelo review here on Cowabunga Corner. But in this episode, when Leonardo turns and looks at Mike and says, do you remember the plan? Mike gets this thought bubble and is filled with crap. Utter, complete crap. And, uh, that, that just made him look stupid. And on top of having in the Mouser's Attack episode, we have now a thought bubble that goes with it. And you're sitting here going, okay, Mike, lives are in danger. You can stand up and think when it comes to saving Leatherhead. You can put in action, put in words, and try to do something. But when... The others are relying on you to think. You're completely flopping out, and that is that is disappointing. There's some things I like. There's a lot of things I like, in fact. I love the series. I'm excited for every new episode. My family's watching it. Uh, more of my friends are actually watching it. I've heard so many Turtle fans come back into the fandom. This is an all-around good season. I enjoy it. There's, as I said, my few little nicks and queries, but he can't please everyone. I know somebody's out there laughing at the thought bubble. I know somebody's out there laughing a lot at all of Michelangelo's operation names. I know people are really enjoying some of the stuff that nerfed me. So while I'm going, eh, I don't like this, I know I'm enjoying things that they don't like. Like, I love the fast pace of the gauntlet. I love how strong Shredder is. I like how Splinter actually got paranoid. It showed more of a human side of him. The embracing of just wanting his family there, safe, holding them close. That made this episode, this season, so strong. With the Nickelodeon Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles CGI series, I say give it a try if you haven't. If you have given it a try and you don't like it, then go back and watch the DVDs of the original series or the four kids series, whatever it is you like. But if you like it, just keep watching, see where it goes, have fun with it, introduce it to friends and get it out there. There is something for everyone in this series that I've seen so far. If you don't like one thing, they got something else. So give it more of a try than one episode. See where they go because they're doing different paces, they're doing different stories and they're having a lot of fun with the characters. We get to see so much more as the season progresses, but that is being saved for another episode of Cowabunga Corner. We'll catch you here next time on Cowabunga Corner. Cowabunga! Hi, I'm Bill Wolf. 
I'm the producer director of the Teenage Mean Ninja Turtles, and I'll be on the next episode of Cowabunga Corner. Hope to see you. Cowabunga, dude.